let's go right ahead and go into some of these risky offseason moves in the in the NBA so far because again like you know the offseason is still um it's still kind of fresh and while obviously there are no big time free agent players remaining in free agency there are a couple so the biggest risk the one of the riskiest moves in the offseason is by far the Lakers not doing anything <laughs> no not really that's Unfortunately, like the Lakers, they aren't going to make this list, even though they probably should make this list, because let's face it, not doing anything in the entire offseason is probably one of the riskiest moves for for the entire NBA. But aside from that, like I'll actually give you some of like some of the moves that teams actually did, as opposed to some moves that teams didn't do. So the Timberwolves, they invested in guard Rob Dillingham. If you guys, you guys probably remember me talking about him in the previous segments when I graded him as an A for the for his summer league performance and, you know, just the fact that the Timberwolves ended up picking him up. So he looked like a, he, people, they're probably going to forget that he was originally picked by the San Antonio Spurs on draft night. Right, and people thought that he would be a phenomenal guard to pair with Victor, because you know they're both young, and they both show a lot of promise. So you know, having giving Victor that young guard to sort of complement his game, is sort of what the Spurs are looking forward and what they're trying to do. But it was later announced, like literally, like right after he signed the contract, right after he got drafted by the Spurs. He, they, he was then traded to the Timberwolves, like, literally directly after he was drafted. And it was, a lot of people were very, very surprised that the Spurs were even going to trade this guard. And the fact that he would be moving to Minnesota, it was seen as rather risky, seeing as, you know, it seemed like the Timberwolves already had their guard. So the Timberwolves brought a fair amount of, of shock and questions surrounding the trade, and what exactly the Wolves ended up giving up in their assets for the guard, right? Now, Minnesota, they had not, they not only agreed to give up its only tradable future first-round pick, the unprotected 2031 selection, but they also gave the Spurs the right to swap first-rounders in 2030, the top uh, top one projected pick. And according to ESPN's Bobby Marks, a first-year salary of $6.3 million for Dillingham also meant play, paying an extra $28 million in luxury taxes next season. So this means that Dillingham is going to cost the Wolves $34.3 million next season, or roughly what players like Jason Tatum and SGA, Donovan Mitchell, and Tyrese Maxey is going to earn. So... Minnesota's current tax bill has since moved from 105.6 million to 311 million. So that that's the total roster cost. And no other moves have been made. Ignoring the financial ramifications is like ignoring all of the things that this does for your team financially. This is a pretty good move in terms of like building the team. Right. Because, you know, you add another young guard that can develop his game along with all the other young players that you have for the team. And they also were able to add significant talent through free agency and only entered the draft with numbers 27 and 37 in terms of like their overall picks. Now, getting a player as talented as Dillingham to come in and learn behind an outstanding veteran like Mike Conley is something that I've been saying is going to be a good thing for the longest time. So really, I think, you know, Dillingham is going to be a big part of this team's future. So this is sort of a move that I feel like it is risky, but it could come in with such a nice and high reward. Now, the next one, the next move on this list is the Knicks trading six first round picks and swaps for Macau Bridges. Now, I recently said that this trade was like, you know, it accomplished both teams, like the goals of both teams. 
they wanted the the Nets wanted to rebuild, like complete re, completely rebuild, and the Knicks wanted to contend, and they also wanted to do it with someone who has who used to be teammates with a majority of the Knicks the Knicks squad, the Villanova people, right? Like Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, Jalen Jalen Brunson, and you know Mikal Bridges. They've all played on the exact same Villanova team, and they all have that chemistry. So. It's like, this trade, at first, I thought it was really, really good. But then I sort of, like, I thought it was pretty, I thought it was, it accomplished something that both sides really wanted. But then I found out what the, exactly what the Knicks had to give up and what they're giving to Brooklyn in response to them giving them Macau. So they get, they gave up a 2025 first round pick, a 2027 and 2029 and 2031 first round pick and 2025 and then they also got a they gave a 2028 first round pick swap and a 2025 second round pick swap as well as Bojan Bogdanovic this is a hefty trade and this like i mean in terms of in in terms of like the hindsight bridges is not like is not going to be worth all of these players like I'm I'm a big fan of Bridges. He was a fantastic player for the Knicks. Not not for the Knicks. The Nets. He averaged 14 points, two, 4 rebounds, 2.3 assists, 1.2 steals in his last full season with the Phoenix Suns. And I mean, while he did play pretty, you know, decent excuse me. Well, he did play pretty decently for the for the Nets. He's never going to be worth all that money. Like, and all those picks. It's like, it could be a similar situation with the Paul George deal, and we know how badly that turns south. So, this kind of package, I don't know if it's really worth bridges, but, like, I'm not entirely... I also don't think that the Knicks will regret this move either, because, you know, they ultimately got exactly what they wanted, all of the players from Villanova on the same team. So... Next on this list is the Grizzlies and drafting Zach Ide at the number nine overall pick. Now, I recently said that, you know, Zach Ide's performance in the Summer League, it was all right, wasn't entirely good, and it wasn't entirely bad. And I also said that, you know, Zach Ide has the potential of being one of the best big men or being a bust. And it's like, you know, it's really difficult to determine exactly what he's going to be. A lot of people consider him you know just Boban like you know the really tall Boban that used to play for the clip for the Houston Rockets and you know the fact that that's what people argue his ceiling is just shows like you know the talent in this NBA's draft like now Zach Ide he's like he's just polarizing like that and so seeing him get drafted to the number nine overall is a lot of people argue it's one of the worst picks in draft history. Like, Kristen Peake of Yahoo Sports does not agree with the Grizzlies taking Zach Ide at number ninth at all. Like, does not agree with it. Now, while a trade-up for Donovan Klingon would have been the ideal outcome, like... Because I, I had a feeling that, you know, the Grizzlies, they needed a center. I just didn't think that drafting this particular center was the best option. But I digress. So I feel like, you know, the biggest, this is one of the riskiest moves because we have no idea the the ceiling that Zach Ide really has. <laughs> ceiling. But, like, yeah, he's tall enough to reach any ceiling. But it's like, is that ceiling going to be top big man in the NBA? I'm not entirely sure. So we are we are close to ending, you know, to ending off this list. And I'll go ahead and I'll speed through some of these just because like, actually, you know what? Now nah, I won't speed through any of these. I don't really need to speed. Next is Bulls. Like they ended up trading Alex Caruso in exchange for Josh Giddy. And, you know, one of the reasons why Josh Giddy requested a trade from OKC was because he wasn't happy with the role that he was going to have on this team. So, or the role that he was going to be when if he were to stay with the Oklahoma City Thunder. He did not want to move 
to the bench. He would have much rather preferred being a starter. And really, I I'm, I don't really see the Chicago Bulls like having good seasons with Giddy in the starting lineup. But that's just me, and that's sort of like one of the biggest reasons, one of the only reasons why I actually have this as a risky move, just because, you know, I don't trust, I don't trust Giddy. Next on this, and finally, like the final thing on this list is the 76ers, you know, they give Paul George a massive $212 million contract for four years. Again, like I'm sure all of you guys, you know, you know exactly just, you know, Paul George's injury history. Like that's not even why I am worried, even though I should worry, like the Sixers should worry about this deal and the fact that he is rather injury prone. I'm more focused on the fact that he's on whether or not the Sixers are actually going to go far in this postseason after acquiring these players, because now that they have, they're giving Joel Embiid, Paul George, and Maxi so much money, and I'm not entirely sure how that's going to fare with salary cap and the new CBA rules, but one thing that I do know is that the 76ers have struggled to make it out of the first round, and here they have, they bring in someone who is, like, known for struggling in the postseason, and they don't expect to struggle in the postseason, but, you know, I digress again. Anything can happen in this offseason. Well, not in this offseason, but anything can happen in the NBA. So really, like, you know, who knows? Maybe this is exactly what they needed in order to beat the Celtics. But again, I don't really feel like this roster can really compete with the Celtics, despite bringing in a pretty competent small forward. But that's all I have. So next, we will go ahead and go into the top the third segment where I talk about the top 25 NBA athletes. ESPN recently made a list about it, so I'm just going to talk about it right after this short break. So be sure to stay tuned. I will be right back. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite cable sports channel, except GSMC Sports Network is absolutely free. Just search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube to catch one of your new favorite shows, like the GSMC College Football Podcast, Chip Shot Football Podcast, Hoops and Heels Women's Sports Podcast, GSMC Basketball Podcast, and so many more. Check it out for yourself. GSMC Sports Network, now available on YouTube absolutely free. Search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube right now. 